Hello everybody, I'm here today with a different audio for you guys. I've been debating making this audio for about two days now because it's a really polarizing subject and some people might not like it, but at this time I don't see how I can not talk about this so this audio is entitled what I won't say on Facebook for me in a personal matter this election has been over and settled since the first week of November I never agreed that there was proof of widespread voter fraud some irregularities but far from enough to claim the election was stolen. But the backlash from the Capitol incident, which to be clear, I strongly condemn because political riots and violence never work. They just make things worse. Well, this incident has forced me to react. All the Democrats that never accepted the 2016 election and did everything in their power to overturn it are now outraged well with this selective outrage gives you zero credibility because if you didn't condemn the riots killings and the violence during this summer's protests looting and rioting but are now outraged after the capital incident your opinion means nothing to me no more also Protesters invading federal buildings has happened continuously in recent years. The Portland Courthouse this summer, the Senate building during the Kavanaugh confirmation hearings, invasion of the Wisconsin Capitol in 2011, and of course the infamous Black Panthers invading the Capitol in 1968. And may I add, the armed Black Panthers. Third, Politician using this inflammatory, using inflammatory political discourse didn't start with Trump. Politicians have forever used this kind of discourse and they are not to blame for some idiots doing some dumb shit. During the summer when Congresswoman, Congresswoman Presley said there needs to be unrest in the streets or Kamala Harris when she said protesters should not let up or even Maxine Waters it, when she said if you see anybody from the cabinet in a restaurant, an apartment store or a gasoline station, get out, create a crowd, and you push back and you tell them that they are not welcome anymore anywhere. Or even Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, when she said, I just don't know why there aren't uprisings all over the country. Maybe they will be. Were they all responsible for the events of this summer? Of course not. And neither is Trump for the Capitol incident. Number four, the racial narrative in this incident is just baseless because there was 68 arrests an armed an unarmed woman veteran shot in the neck is hardly letting them roam freely dozens of weapons seized and if this is if there would have been any different outcome if it were BLM well we can go back and check in the 1968 Black Panther invasion of the Capitol, did any of these things happen differently? You can go check for yourself. Number five, they say Trump has been calling for this protest for weeks. If so, why not, why not put up the protective fence before this protest? Since it's been announced for weeks, they had plenty of time to, pre to prepare themselves. No, the fence only went up the day after the protest. Or even the Capitol Police letting opening up the gates for some protesters to come in. Or opening even some side doors for more protesters to come in. I ask myself, did they want the protesters to come in? Because what followed gives me the idea that they might have wanted to use this in the future to what came next. 
at the end of the day, if I were to follow liberal logic, I would say, like they did this summer, that since there were tens, if not hundreds of thousands of protesters present, and that only a few hundred invaded the capital, that this was a mostly peaceful protest. But I won't, because I'm not a hypocrite. All political rioting or violence is wrong and should be denounced from no matter what political side it comes from. But when 75 million people feel disenfranchised, the solution is not to silence them because it would only enrage them more. There's the two extremes, the far left and the far right are basically fringes on each side but for some reason are the ones that are most listened to. When conversation between two moderate peop people that have common sense and logical thinking should be the way to fight this, instead, we are polarizing even more to each side and closing off any conversation. Except the left will never call out their own far left side because it's too scared. A little word about the Twitter ban and the purge that is happening on social media. If Iran's Ayatollah can write debt to America and advocate the killing of a U.S. president and the Chinese Communist Party can glorify sending Muslims to concentration camps on Twitter without getting banned, you must know this is not about democracy or safety. It's about politics. And one day it will happen to you. And if you don't think so, you lack understanding of history. Big tech oligarchs are now more powerful than the President of the United States. Think about that for a moment. It's funny how they how they off, how they opened the Capitol doors and let the, the protesters in. It was all they needed. But when the Democrats controlling but now with the Democrats controlling both chambers, they attacked and are now banning any dissident voices. They have banned Trump from all social media platforms. They have canceled Trump campaign's email providers uh, provider from accessing all their email uh, information, meaning they can't send back um, emails to all the people uh, that supported the, the, the president or that donated to the president. The walkaway campaign, which has over half a million stories about people leaving the Democrat Party, mostly African Americans, LGBT uh, members of that community. Why would they ban them? It's because they don't want conversation and they want a purge of any dissident voices. And for them, conservatives are dangerous. Parler, which was an alternative to Twitter of more in a free speech principle has now been stripped from Google Play and Apple App Stores. So when they told you, if you have a problem with Twitter censoring people, start your own platform. Well, they did. And now they're trying to censor even those. The Gravel Institute, which is the, the left-wing equivalent to Prager U University, was asked on Twitter, if leftists had stormed the Capitol, you'd support it? They answered, yes, they are fighting for a good cause. So once again, this is not about safety or about democracy or about violence. It's about politics. And one day, it's your politics they will be attacking. One last thing about the Gravel Institute. The Gravel Institute is a progressive think tank active on YouTube and Twitter. The Institute aims to counteract American conservative think tanks, particularly PragerU, from a left-wing perspective. The Institute is named for its founder, Mike Gravel, a former United States Senator from, Al from Alaska. And here to close off before I finish this audio is a message from ACLU. 
Legislative Council, Kate Ruan. The ACLU is, um, is a civil liberties institution that's supposed to fight for the people's civil liberties, but they have been a, or, or strict um, critique of uh, Donald Trump during these four years of presidency had this statement about the Twitter ban, about the social media ban of President Trump. For months, President Trump has been using social media platforms to see doubt about the results of the election and to undermine the will of the voters. We understand the desire to permanently suspend him now, but it should concern everyone when companies like Facebook and Twitter wield the unchecked power to remove people from platforms that have become indispensable for the speech of billions, especially when political realities make those decisions easier. President Trump can turn to his press team or Fox News to communicate with the public, but others, like the many black, brown, and LGBTQ activists who have been censored by social media companies, will not have that luxury. It is our hope that these companies will apply their rules transparently to everyone. So even the ACLU sees the danger of this slippery slope of starting to ban and censor political opponents' voices. With that, I leave you. Hope to see you soon.